Yo, what is up guys? It's Chase Oliver 68 here, bringing you my NFL wild card recap. Also going to give my predictions for next week games in this video. Going to be short and quick. Let's get started. So first off, we had the Cincinnati Bengals versus the Houston Texans. Cincinnati really, really, to me, I thought they looked like a better team than Houston. Houston, they were able to take, they were able to turn the ball over and take advantage of it. And that's what I like to see out of a good defense like that. When a defense allow, turns over the ball and their offense is allowed to score, that shows that they are careful with the football and they know what they're doing with the football. Aaron Foster looked good that game. Now, the thing is, I, the reason why I say the Cincinnati Bengals look like a better team on offense overall, they were getting down the field really good. Andy Dalton just made a little bit crucial mistakes and there was some good playmaker. There were some good playmakers on that team that helped um, TJ Yates and the Texans out. To be honest, I thought the Cincinnati Bengals looked better, but even though they lost, you know, the Bengals still have a lot to look on. Bengals fans, you guys are not, not done. You guys are not finished. This is not a time to moan and complain and say this sucks. No, you guys should be happy you made the playoffs, especially with a rookie QB and a rookie wide receiver being your two main players most of the time. You guys got a good defense already. Keep those guys in check. Get other talent on the offensive end, especially your offensive line. You guys will be a set team. If you guys had an offensive lineman that wouldn't let J.J. Watt um, separate and put his hands out, you guys probably wouldn't have got that interception. It could have been a 10-yard completion. There's a lot of good things for you Cincinnati Bengals fans to look at, but now the Texans are going to be facing the Ravens. Now, who do I think are going to win that game, Texans or Ravens? To be honest, this is going to be a really, really good, interesting game. If you guys do not know, I'm a fan of defensive battles. I'm not really a fan of this whole high-scoring stuff. Yeah, those are cool to watch. It's cool seeing high-scoring games. But I also like a little defensive edge of a battle to see which who's the bigger man. And that's what I like to see. So, to be honest, I got to go with the Baltimore Ravens. You know, this is going to be an interesting matchup. Two QBs that I'm not really big fans of, like TJ Yates and Joe Flacco going at it. You know, I'm not a huge fan of Joe Flacco. TJ Yates, you know, seriously, even though he came out of North Carolina, I'm not really a huge fan of his. Uh... I, if Matt Shaw was playing, I would have probably given this to the Texans. And plus, I really do not see Ray Rice or Aaron Foster making a big impact. But hey, I could be wrong. But I'm going with the Baltimore Ravens here. Should be an interesting matchup. Next up, we got the Detroit Lions versus the New Orleans Saints. That played on Saturday card, Wild Night, whatever Faye Hill was saying while she was shaking her damn hips. But besides that, Detroit Lions, man. That defense was god-awful. Drew Brees could have been sitting in a freaking chair get, getting a fucking tan and would have thrown a touchdown. Man, Drew Brees looked on fire. They gave up the most yards, the most yards, the Detroit Lions in, out of any playoff game. A record held by the San Diego Chargers since 1964, I believe. Damn, that was impressive by the Saints, but Detroit Lions looked ugly. Detroit had so many opportunities. Lion fans, just like I said to the Bengal fans, do not be depressed. Do not be freaking sad that you guys did not make it. You guys are still inexperienced and young. You guys got a good football team. You guys are in a tough division. This is, should be a celebration because next year, you don't know what the Bears are going to look like and the Packers have a lot of free agency options. It could be different. It could happen where the Detroit Lions could take over the NFC North. Not saying they will, but they have a chance. To me, the Packers still are the better team, but you know, with three, you have to wait till what the offseason brings. So you guys should be happy. You guys got a good, nice draft pick. You finally are in the 20s once again, but this is what I got to say. You guys turned the ball, you guys did not turn the ball over until later part of the game. And that's what cost you. Not only that, you made Drew Brees turn over the Saints offense twice. Twice you made them turn over in the first half and you couldn't capitalize on that. You could have had a 14-0 lead on the Saints, but you let that up. And that's why you guys did not win the football game. If you guys would have scored on those two turnovers early in the game, you got, this would have been a different story. Drew Brees could have been coming back from behind. And you guys probably would have lost 38-45 or probably won 45-38. So really, it kind of sucks. But hey, you guys got a good future. Matthew Stafford actually played a full season healthy. And he got 5,000 yards for you. That should make you guys excited for Detroit Lions football next year. That is what people live for as football fans. They look and they see, yes, this is a team that we can support, and that's what you guys have. You have a team you can support and be happy with. So don't be mad, Detroit, New Orleans. You guys got to go play San Francisco. Now, what are my predictions? San Francisco, New Orleans. New Orleans can't have not really won a playoff game on the road. It's been proven. 
They have not won a playoff game on the road. They're like zero and whatever on road playoff games. But do you think they have a chance? San Francisco, yes, they have a good defense. And Saints do like to base around Darren Sproles and Pierre Thomas. They could be kept in check, but for how long? That's the question. Can you keep in check little lightning bug and big strong Pierre Thomas and maybe a Chris Ivory a little bit to keep your offense, go, keep your defense going and on their toes? Passing department, are those 49, 49ers, although they have a really good defense this year, they're not really the best pass defense. Look at what guys like John Skelton and Kevin Cobb and Sam Bradford and T. Boris Jackson in the NFC West has done to the 49ers passing defense. They're not really that good, and Drew Brees and the Saints are morally a passing team, but we will have to wait and see. My my prediction, um, I got the New Orleans Saints winning this game, but I would not be surprised if the San Francisco 49ers win because Alex Smith, although he's not been having a career season or anything of that matter, you know, he does move the ball very well sometimes. Frank Gore can easily gash through that Saints defense, in my opinion. I don't think the Saints have good linebackers or DT or D tackles or D ends to really stop a Frank Gore for like a 12-yard loss. I, I think even like a four-yard run is good enough with Frank Gore there because, hey, four yards is better than zero yards. Am I right, guys? I mean, every yard counts in football. So I got to go with, uh, you know, freaking Saints here. David Akers and Frank Gore could change that game, but who knows? We have to wait and see. Besides that, let's get on to the next playoff game. Oh, God, Atlanta, what happened to you? Now, this right here, the New York Giants. I really like the New York Giants. Not as one of my favorite teams, but I really do like the cast of crew they have there. You know, they have a very good, likable crew. They have a crew that I feel is very good. I mean, sure, NFC East people, like the Redskins fans, the Eagles, and the Cowboys fans are going to say, fuck you, Chase, you don't know what you're talking about. But, hey, I'm an AFC West guy. I don't care what NFC East fans think about them. I don't even care what I think about other AFC West teams. I don't care. So let me like the Giants. You can hate them. Let me have my opinion. You have your opinion. It's that simple, sports fans. But besides that fact, New York Giants, this is a defense I was expecting from you guys for a long time. Man, they <coughs> the Falcons offense did not put up any points on the board. Yes, Eli Manning made a stupid play and gave them a safety, but besides this, this should have been a shutout. Besides that one safety, this game should have been a shutout. And I'm sorry, Falcons fans, I was expecting much more from the Falcons. The Falcons did not really look like an elite team, a good team. They looked absolutely horrible. I mean, the Giants' defense is not very really good at the pass at, when it comes to passing. They looked actually pretty well off. Eli Manning didn't have huge numbers, and yet they still won the football game and that's the problem Atlanta really needs to focus on that defense Falcons fans congratulations for making the playoffs again sorry that you guys fell short Tony Gonzalez maybe next year but hey you know you guys made it something you should shine your head upon I know it's been since 2004 since you won the playoffs but be happy you made the playoffs because my fucking Chargers <coughs> have not made the playoffs in two fucking years because we suck but besides that back um, next week the New York Giants faces the big bad Green Bay Packers. And remember week 13, the New York Giants almost beat the Green Bay Packers. But that's almost. And the reason thing is, Aaron Rodgers is just so clutch. This game, I'm excited for next week's games. You do not understand. I cannot wait for Giants Green Bay. They put on a phenomenal game week 13. It's going to be a phenomenal game when they play again. And to be honest, I can see the Giants winning. But really, I feel that Eli will probably make some mistakes. You're playing in Lambeau. Lambeau's a loud crowd, especially during the playoff season. Green Bay has home field. Last time, though, if you remember last time, Green Bay and New York played in the playoffs in Lambeau. It was a field goal kick that decided and let Brett Favre lose and not go to the Super Bowl to face the undefeated Patriots. So remember that. that. That's history lesson right there. So could the Giants pull off the upset? Who knows? To be honest, I think Green Bay right now looks too good on offense, not on the defensive side. This will be a high-scoring football game. I'm not going to deny it. This game might be a little bit too high-scoring for my liking, but it's going to be an interesting game. It's something that I cannot wait to see. Um, really, to be honest, this is going to be a good game, but I'll have to go with the Green Bay Packers. You know, I just think they're a little bit too better than the New York Giants, but hey, if the New York Giants play defense like they did today, Green Bay could be having some problems, you know? But pretty much that's my prediction there. And finally, we got Tim Tebow's Denver Broncos versus the 
Ben Roethlisberger, Pittsburgh Steelers. Now, hold up a minute. I got to just address something about Tim Tebow. I, I, I really do. Guys, just listen to me out. Many people know that I'm not a huge fan of Tim Tebow. Why? I'm an Alabama fan. I'm sorry. I can't help it if I hate someone that whooped my fucking team's ass. You guys don't like certain players. I know someone, an uh, Eagles fan, who doesn't like Michael Strahan because Michael Strahan kept whipping their asses. Respectable. I mean, if you are in a different conference, you most likely don't really like teams like teams players that are in the same conference as you you know what i'm saying like i'm i'm a chargers fan so i'm not really gonna like a lot of broncos players do i respect them though yes i respect football players i respect what they do on the field don't think i hate every single living player that is on the raiders roster no i like jason campbell chicken noodle soup i used to like carson palmer the reason why i say used to because he, he became a bum and started to drink on his couch I like Ronaldo McClain. I used to like Nam the Awesome Oga before I saw this season on the Eagles. I used to like a lot of players on the Raiders, but I don't like the Raiders team. I want my Chargers to win, but I do like Champ Bailey. I like Jamal Charles from Kansas City. I like Eric Berry from Kansas City. I like these guys. I like that guy. I like Dwayne Bowe. I'm allowed to like players because I play fantasy football, and I don't know about you. I have Carson Palmer on my fantasy team. Made him like, made me like him a little bit more. So I'm allowed to like players, but just because I get angry about a certain player is because of this. I get angry about Tim Tebow because everyone forces him down our fucking throats. They make him out like he's some god or something. When you play a football game, it's not just one individual. This ain't basketball. You can't just have one individual excel. It's a team. And as a team, the Broncos are the best team out of the AFC West. They're the fourth best team in the AFC, and I'm saying that because it's true. The Broncos are. I'm a Chargers fan, and I'm admitting that. How many Chargers fans, Bronco fans you see on YouTube actually admit that shit? No, we fucking idiots and think that we're better than you when we're not. We're not. If we were better than you, we'd be in the playoffs. It's that simple. But we're not as good as you, and congratulations for making it to the playoffs, and congratulations on your win today, but let me finish about Tim Tebow, I like Tim Tebow as a person, he's a great person, I think Tim Tebow is a good athlete, I just don't think he's he should be overhyped as people make him out to be, it seems like every time he wins a football game, SportsCenter nonstop just shoves all this Tim Tebow bullshit down your throat, it's like, we get it, he's really good, but what about TJ Yates, what about Andy Dalton, what about Cam Newton? What about those guys? Those guys are equally as good as Tim Tebow, in my opinion. What about those guys? Those guys are doing good for their teams. There's a bunch of other players doing probably the same shit as Tim Tebow, but Tim Tebow gets this huge persona just because he's a very good Christian guy and he has a winning attitude. So does Cam Newton. So does every quarterback in the NFL. And I just feel he's overhyped sometimes. Do I like Tim Tebow? Not really. As a quarterback, not really. As a person, hell, I would share a brewski with Tim Tebow if he was allowed to drink. I'll be honest there, I would. But I'm not going to fucking say, get on his nuts and freaking suck them just because he's doing good. He impressed me today in this game. I thought Tim Tebow played a hell of a football game today. Steelers defense, you know, they look like the Steelers normally do in playoffs. Isn't that true, Steelers fans? You know, first half, you guys kind of look like, ah, oh, fuck this, our season's over. And then second half, you guys come back and fucking look phenomenal. I, I always got to get the Steelers that. In the playoffs, it always seems like, man, the Steelers are going to fucking lose, but then they come back and they win. Look at the Super Bowl last year. They looked like they were getting their asses kicked. Mike Tomlin was all like, I'm a fucking intimidating black guy. I'm like one of the most legit coaches in the NFL. You better fucking play before I kill all y'all. And then, bam, right there. They look good. So, you know, the Steelers, you know, to be honest, they didn't look bad. Big Ben, whatever hatred I have for him is pretty much gone because, to be honest, he, he played good this season. He played on a bad ankle. That's respect for me. I mean, I used to not like Big Ben because I always thought he was overrated and overhyped by all this this media. But to be honest, he deserved it all along because he's been playing good. And I respect Big Ben now. Tim Tebow, will you earn my respect? Maybe down the road. But I'm not going to love Tim Tebow. He's, he's a Denver Bronco. I'm a Chargers fan. I got to stay loyal to my team. I can respect players. I can like players all I want. But I got to stay loyal to my team. And sorry for me being loyal to my team, not liking certain players. Sorry that he kicked Alabama's ass, and I don't like that. I don't. But besides that, besides that, congrats to the Denver Broncos. You guys will be facing the Patriots next weekend. What are my predictions on that game? The Denver Broncos defense. Oh, damn, dude. 
I gotta say, very good defense. Uh, not the best in the Actually, a lot of teams have very good defenses in the playoffs. The Ravens have a good defense. The Broncos, um, the 49ers, you know, there's a lot of good teams with defenses here. But um, the Broncos' uh, defense is very good. But are we going to get a repeat what happened last time Tebow and Brady faced? Or is it going to be a different story? Because I think it could be a different story if Tim Tebow did what he did today and throwing, throwing the football more and actually you know, being fine with it. You know, he was throwing the football. He looked like a quarterback. He didn't look like a running back. I mean, he actually looked like a legit quarterback throwing that football. So, who knows? I'm going to go with the New England Patriots just because um, I think the New England Patriots overall is a better team. But I would not be surprised if the Denver Broncos won. So, anyways, that's my predictions. That's my game recaps. Hope you guys enjoyed. Hope you guys understand where I'm coming from. Subscribe above. You like sports, wrestling, MMA, anything. I provide those videos. Comment down below your thoughts on these wild card games and all that razzmatazz. And yeah, I'm just Oliver 68 and I said peace.